For the next discussion, let's make a new page again here, a new image. Click on File, New. Set this to default Photoshop size. Give us a nice blank area. And I'll make some color circles again. It's kind of a medium green here. Put one right in there. Grab my paintbrush tool. There we go. Let's put one right down here. And I'll do two more of these guys. There we go. And deselect that. It's all on one layer. I'm going to double click on that to make it a regular layer. And we're all set. Now the next two tools we're looking at is the gradient tool and the paint bucket tool. The paint bucket tool allows you to fill an area with paint. It's going to try to match the colors. There we go. Notice how there is a tolerance up here. It's going to try to come close to the colors by using that tolerance level. Let's change this over to a blue color. So if I come in here, click inside the shape, it's going to fill that shape with the blue color up to the tolerance that it has with this tolerance level. Let's take a look at our photograph here. Say I wanted to come in and do the the grass up here. Notice how it filled in a lot of that, but it missed part of the grass up here and down here. That's because those are outside of that tolerance level of 32. Come in here, same thing. It filled up to the tolerance level. So if I made a smaller number, it would be less tolerant. Let's put a number here of 10. Click over on the grass here, much smaller. If I had a larger number in here, say 100, click on the grass again, much larger. So you can control how much it fills by using or changing your tolerance level. Okay, let's just set this one back to its original. There we go. Go back to our untitled again. Now one thing to be aware of when you're filling these kind of shapes in here, I'm going to zoom in on the edge of this so you can really see this. Notice how it has a soft edge. You can see right here the soft edge is made up with lightening the pixels right along that edge. So if I used the bucket tool, clicked in here someplace, at tolerance of 100 it gets, catches all of that. Let's step backwards and set this down to the default of 32. Click in here again. You can see there's a little bit of green happening on that edge. Just a little bit of green discoloration. I'll put this down to 10. Click out here again. And there's more of that green showing on the edge. So be aware that the tolerance setting may allow a little bit of uncolored or blending of your colors along those edges. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. Let me just do a real drastic demonstration of that. Let me set the tolerance at zero. Click out here. It now only matches this color and you can see we still have the green in there along those edges. It gives us kind of a green halo in there. So be aware that depending on what the shape is, the tolerance level here is important. Now in most instances the default of 32 will work out just fine. That's why that is the default setting. Just back out a little bit here. There we go. I click in the middle someplace in the white area. Notice how it fills in all the white and didn't fill in here, but you see right there, see that, that outline? That outline was caused by that tolerance setting in there. Again, the colors were off by a little bit, so you get that outline left. So just keep that in mind. Let's just step backwards. Let's now go over here to the gradient tool. The gradient tool has options up here. As you can see, the first option on the gradient is the foreground to background color. In this case, it's blue to white. We then have foreground to transparent right there. And then some standard gradients. There are a lot more gradients to choose from down here. Lots of gradient libraries to choose from. And you can make your own gradients, which we discuss later on. We have some basic gradient settings in here. A linear gradient, radial gradient, an angle gradient, reflected gradient, and a diamond gradient. I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to do a gradient just like that. Notice how it fills the whole layer here with that gradient. It didn't matter what I had drawn on there. It filled that whole layer. 
Let's just step backwards. So it doesn't act like the paint bucket tool. With the paint bucket tool, you click inside of a shape, and it stays inside that color area. We don't have that happening here with the gradient tool. So if I wanted to do leave these in the foreground, I need to delete this white, make that transparent, and then do my gradient behind that. Let's do it real fast. Go to our magic wand. Click the background like that. Hit the delete key. Click again to deselect. That deletes the background. Now keep in mind that the magic wand also has a tolerance level set at 15. So I will have some haloing around the edges of these things because of that. But I'm not going to bother fixing that right now. Go to our layers and make a new layer. Pull that layer underneath just like that. I'm on layer 1 now which is below our circles. I can now use my gradient just like that. And the gradient sits in behind. You can see right there the little white edge. That's because the tolerance was set at 15 on that magic wand. So if you want to do gradients behind objects, make sure that you have those separated into different layers. If you want to put a gradient inside of a shape, use your magic wand and I'm on the wrong layer here. Let's go up to our layer 0. Click into that shape like that. I now can place a gradient across that and the gradient goes inside of that shape. It's doing this way. There we go. So you can place gradients in shapes. Just make sure that you're working with a selection or a marquee to control where that gradient is applied. Let's just deselect that one. There we go. Gives a nice kind of a, a pseudo 3D effect in there. Now a few more things on these gradients. Let's go back here. I'm going to hide this foreground stuff. Get that out of the way. Go back to our background layer. There we go. I'll choose one of our other gradients. Let's just do this bright orange and yellow thing. So here is a linear gradient. Notice how it goes from the start left side here is where I begin clicking. Right side is where I end clicking and then it all kind of fills in between. So if I go from there to there that's the start of the gradient, that's the end of the gradient. This just kind of fills in that color. So you can control the width of that by pulling it across your page. Different types of gradients. Here's a radial gradient. Into out. I'm, I'm going to switch over here. Let's just do real basic. Let's just do black to white. Make it real easy to see this. There we go. Here's a radial gradient. That's in to out. Let's do an out to in. And as you can see, it's going from the inner part of the circle, and it's going from the, my first click is the left side of the gradient, the last click where I let go is the right side of the gradient. If I want to have this backwards, just go up here to reverse, just like that. I'll pull out towards the middle, so it's now reversed, just like that. Great way to make little spheres, by the way, just use just little bits and put them onto different layers and get little sphere things happening. Our next one here is the angle gradient. And I'll go from the middle and pull out. And you see what it does is it pulls a line and then pulls the gradient around that beginning point. So the beginning of the gradient is here, pulls around and ends the gradient over there. Let's do one just like that. There we go. interesting gradient. This one takes a gradient from one side to the other and then reflects that gradient. So it begins here and comes out this way and then reflects that on that side. You make kind of, kind of interesting little pipe shaped things this way or line shaped things. Like if you put these on different layers you can have multiple pipes. Let's just do one there. I'll make a new layer above that layer too and I'll do one right there. Let's do another layer here. Layer 3 I'll do one right there. Now the gradient of course is filling all the black area so I'm going to use the magic wand and let's just delete these black areas just like that. Let's come down to layer 2 same thing And I'll delete those black areas on layer 2. And then deselect. And what I get is just those gradients left with no background showing. 
I can then put it in whatever I want to as my background. Let's come down to layer one and do it one more time. Just delete the areas around that, like that. There we go. And then let's make another new layer. I'll put it underneath, put it at the bottom of my stack. Come back to our gradients again. And let's go to our foreground and background color gradient right there. I'll pull that across. And there we go. Just using gradient tools, we have some interesting kind of pipe things happening here sitting in a sky environment. Now, along with everything else on the gradients, I can change my blending mode on how the gradient blends in with the layers behind it. I can change the opacity, make it a little more transparent. I can reverse that gradient or not. Dithering softens up the edge, and transparency allows transparency to happen. Of course, transparency, if you have pulled your gradients onto separate layers, here's layer three, you can control your transparency right here as well. I'll just pull this back a little bit, and it can make that layer see-through right there so that gradient has some transparency to it as well so those are those two options near the gradient tool and the paint bucket tool we'll come back a little later on and spend more time on these gradients and i'll show you how to make your own custom gradients